this is the first ever episode of the Horsepower Podcast. Coming to you in another take. <laughs> Okay, we are officially live. We're live? We're live. We're doing it. Live, live, live. Awesome. Well, guys, welcome to the first ever official Horsepower Podcast. I'm Jenna Smink, and my co-host is Steve Paulson. And we are reporting live from Ramona, California, where I've been down here the last few days getting to know Steve. First official meeting. I had never met you but online, but always super impressed with your background, which we'll get into in a second. Um, but I wanted to quickly introduce myself. If you aren't familiar or aren't following me, my name is Jenna, like I said, I'm a pro barrel racer. I grew up on a ranch doing, you know, basic ranch work. So we always had horses roping, um, all of the rodeo events, pole bending, goat tying, whatnot. And then I basically fell in love with the sport of rodeo and that's what I do today, so. Awesome, yeah. So that's really cool. And what's kind of fun about us is we both are complete opposite ends of the spectrum. So. I'm Steve, like I said, and I'm more English and liberty and natural kind of horsemanship, whereas Jenna is more the rodeo, western, cowgirl, farm life. Um, so hopefully we can kind of bring both aspects of the horse world together. Uh, my background, I started out just riding English a little bit here and there, and then I got into polo, had a really nice horse that took me from polo to eventing, which then led me to get the audition to join Cavalia, which is a horse theater show in North America that travels around. Um, and then through that I got into some movie stunts and film work in Europe and then joined another show similar to Cavalia called Appassionata and from there I'm now back in California so it, it was really fun that it worked out for Jenna to come here and hang out and it's been a, a hard battle to get everything together. <laughs> Lined up. Yep. We actually recorded this episode a while ago when I was in Afghanistan and the Wi-Fi ate it. So we figured we would wait and redo it when when I was out here in person, which is going amazing. Yeah, so it's definitely Learning new and so improved. Much. Yes. <laughs> yep. And so our idea for this podcast is to bring all facets of the horse industry together to learn from each other um, and kind of look over the fence at what other experts or other professionals are doing in their specific discipline. And I just love learning from other people where in, in one industry we can get so focused, have tunnel vision, we just kind of all do the same things and work with each other, but we never really step out into, you know, into a totally different world. And the inspiration for me for this came from when I spent some time on the racetrack. I learned about their feeding program, their warm-up program, their exercise program, and it made such a huge impact in my horse's life, how he was running in the rodeo arena, that I just thought, wow, you know, this is only one experience. What if we did this, you know, every week or every month where I just, you know, asked questions and remained a student and continually wanted to learn and grow. So that's the idea. And yeah. we'll be bringing some experts from all over the world, bringing them together and sharing their stories, their experiences, and some of their um, secrets for success. So Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're also both, we're all working with the same animal, you know, we're all working <laughs> with a horse right. and they're all the same, you know, all horses, they respond to pressure and release and we're all training them to do something or other. So that's why it's going to be so cool. Like she said, we're going to bring so many different people that hopefully we all doing the same thing, but we can take little bits and with horses, the more you learn, right. the more you realize you have no idea. Exactly. And anything. that's been so eye opening for me just the last few days I've come out here to spend um, some time with Steve and get to know him and, and what he does a little bit better. And it's just been eye opening how much there still is to learn because you know, in my world, I am a professional, so you'd think I'd have it all together by now, but absolutely not. Horses are just it's so incredible, and to learn their language and to become a better partner with them and really just establish a connection is what I'm after. Even though I'm a pro barrel racer, first I want to be a, a really good horseman or horsewoman. Yeah. So <laughs> that's my goal anyways. Um, but let's dive into, let's talk a little bit more about your background. Cool. So yeah. um, you started out not having horses when you were younger, yeah, right? I, yeah. I'm typical American family, <laughs> mom and dad, they had a son and a daughter. The daughter plays sports and the son plays sports and we're a big athletic family and I decided I wanted to ride horses and my parents are like, well, that's not a sport. So <laughs> that does not qualify for you. You know, we had a list of rules like be on a sports team and keep a certain grade average. And so I had to convince my parents that horse riding was a sport <laughs> and I didn't have to play basketball and golf and tennis like they wanted me to so that was fun and then I ended up evolving to polo which for me it's kind of fun it's a saving grace I know polo is really hard on the horses and it can be a extreme but for me I 
kind of I think had to have my polo in the beginning because it was so fun and it was just a game and the mm -hmm. horses are sometimes treated like machines a little bit where it's like you have so many of them that there's so many but that really is what got me into horses and then from there I had a really special horse named Marley who I started jumping and doing eventing on and she took me all the way to two star level which is pretty good um the olympics is four star so okay. it's maybe two levels lower than the olympics which is pretty fun that me and this little thoroughbred i bought for a thousand dollars made it all the way that <laughs> far um so, so that was fun and also for any listeners listening if you're confused about polo or eventing <laughs> don't worry we're gonna do yes. breakout episodes of each of these disciplines in the future so be sure to shoot us some dms if you have questions but we will go over this in depth in detail yeah. at a later time but back to you, you yeah Steve, so. no exactly and like she said like hopefully we'll even get some really influential polo players or eventers Absolutely. or barrel racers you know so yeah. we can kind of all dive deep on the actual disciplines themselves so yeah so that's kind of where i went with it and then after eventing i had a really good friend and one of the people i really look up to is a girl named rebecca and she's kind of just been that person where you're like Damn, she's a good rider like <laughs> she's that friend that you're like i want to be i'm jealous of you because yeah. i want to be as good as you are and so that being said she um she gave me a call and was like hey i'm in cavalia she's been in about three years and i was a stalker so if anyone's a stalker <laughs> out there i would message her probably every couple months i was like i want to join i want this lifestyle she was touring the world and in australia That's asia amazing. europe it was unreal and they came to California and she called me. She's like, I got you an audition and you come here in two weeks and you're going to ride a couple horses. And I did it. And two weeks later, I was on tour with wow. the Lord, largest <laughs> touring show in the entire world. So and how long did you do that for? I was there for a little under two years. Okay. And so it was very, very eye opening. And I owe a lot to that because it kind of, I just was thrown in. Like I was a proper English rider and played polo and very posh in a sense where I, you know, I was used mm -hmm. to all this and I went to this world of. Uh, all Europeans pretty much. I was the only American besides Rebecca. <laughs> and so it was really fun because you just see like Liberty. I was like, what is right. Liberty? What's Roman riding? They call it Hungarian post. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so sorry, okay. Hungary and then the Romans would do it. Yeah, so there's so much history with all these other disciplines and trick riding where people are like crawling underneath the horse's stomach and mm -hmm. just crazy stuff. So that was very eye opening. It kind of gave me my love for like the horse itself. And the show really had a beautiful aspect on like the horse is the artist right. and I see so many performers where it's all about that person and the horses kind of supplement that mm -hmm. person where I love when it's really the horse is that the, the artist and we're kind of just letting the horse work around us Showcasing and with us them. exactly yeah. so so that was amazing so I kind of did Cavalia for a bit and it was just yeah a great thing we every two months we were on a new tour so hopefully I'll be able so to a different country country different city, city okay. state kind of just depends we would fly the horses we'd rent big 747 cargo planes wow. and we get to like go up in the planes <laughs> with them and see them get lifted and so I was very lucky that I was able to adopt quite a few horses and those are mostly Andalusians pretty correct? much Andalusians okay. yeah there's Andalusians we'll do the dressage acts and the big stuff and then there's the quarter horses do the trick riding there's Arabians that do a lot of the Liberty oh fun yes yeah, so there was a, a lot of horses and like I said we'll have hopefully a few Cavalia cast Absolutely. we'll have them on and we'll <laughs> talk about you know their experience and how it was and just embed the show and and yeah, and then that just kind of led me on to the next. And I met a guy called Ben Action Horses mm -hmm. that a lot of people will know. And I went over to him in Europe and learned a lot about the film and the TV industry, which is like, I have friends that did Game of Thrones. and That is so is, cool. And wild. I was mentioning the other day, I love the show Water for Elephants or yeah. the movie. Yeah. And Steve, of course, was like, yeah, those were my friend's horses. Yeah. And I just died. I was so impressed. Yeah, it's so <laughs> cool. It's so fun. And like, when you see all your friends like finally being able to post once the movie's out then right. everyone can yeah, post I'm sure all they pictures. keep it under wraps yeah so i have a bunch of friends that are doing really wow. cool things and then you see them post it and you're like oh that I is just, just incredible you. Yeah, yeah all your friends we're gonna get them on the show yeah, and exactly. i already have ten thousand questions yeah no. so have fun yeah so it's really cool and then i lastly was in europe and i worked for a couple people over there Elise Forman is another one that is just an idol of mine and she just is that person that what you see on the video is exactly how she trains and mm -hmm. it's so rare for me I know especially everyone like you and I both know on Instagram everyone posts their best right. stuff so it's cool to see you're so, not sure how many takes that yeah how many takes exactly. or how how, does, how many times did the horse run away right. before you got that and then everyone's <laughs> jealous so she's really was someone another one that I really love very up to. yeah and, everything is as good as it is so yeah and then it kind of led me back here and now i'm in california i'm gonna start some new little projects 
And so we'll, cool. Yeah, we'll kind of crack on. So yeah, I met. I just met Steve online. I was a huge fan and follower, and I knew who Ben Action Horses was. And um, since I was a little girl, I've always been really interested in Liberty. Yeah. But like most things, you don't always have access to lessons or access to trainers. So I just did the best with what I had yeah. and did my own interpretation of you know, what I thought that would look like. And I had never really trained a horse by myself. We always had ranch horses on the ranch that we used for working cattle. So okay. we had working horses. Gotcha. And I used basically just the horse that I, de I deemed mine yeah. as a barrel horse, Claimed as a pole it. horse, yeah. goat tying horse. And then we also did queening competitions, which to have a barrel horse running at top speed and then asking them to go in to do a queen contest, which is like a reining pattern, yeah. is certainly tricky. So I always really tried to focus on my connection with them, building a good foundation. Foundation, awesome. and then also intention like when I go in to ride what I'm asking them to do um, but I never had any formal instruction until college so when I went to college I made the decision to join the equestrian team at South Dakota State and I got to ride Western which was eye-opening because that was the first time that I actually had an instructor show me from day one like yeah. how do you build a foundation what does a correct stop look like um, and so from there it was like off to the races I kind of fell back in love with the sport of rodeo through winning Miss Rodeo Florida oh, crazy. and um, at the time in my life when I wanted to be a pro barrel racer I of course didn't have a truck trailer or horse yeah. since you know life kind of got in the way I joined the military and served for nine years so I kind of got away from it um, and when I went back to try to compete I knew that I couldn't just afford to buy a pro finished horse so I thought why don't I just make a journey of this document my story along the way um, and that's when I found Taz he came off the racetrack as a four-year-old so I kind of worked with him and then built him up to where he is now. We've been, I think, running pro for three years. So awesome. through that journey, yeah. I've tried to reach out to people like Steve to learn along the way because I don't just want Taz to be a pro barrel horse. I want him to be oh, my man. partner. Yeah. So my next big feat for him is to do some of the things that I learned from Steve this week, which is Liberty and you know working him without a halter or lunch line and just being a better communicator on the ground and yeah. be more direct and... One thing that was super eye-opening was how much Steve works a horse without actually being on their back, which is like a novelty in the Western industry. So I'm really excited to go learn some of those tools that, you know, that you've taught me on my barrel horse. And all of that stuff translates to your discipline, whether it's barrel racing, cutting, right. you know, no matter what it is, we are, like you said, just working with a horse and working with an animal that doesn't speak English. So yeah. we have to learn their language. How they speak yes. and how they communicate. Yep, and yeah. why not, you know, learn from the best of the best. I think this podcast is just going to be a huge opportunity to get people, you know, on a, on a more national platform to share their yeah. stories um, and share some of the tools and clinics. Like I was saying before, I would love to go to more stuff like this. I just don't quite know where, where it is, how. how to get it. So yeah. hopefully this podcast will be um, a tool to bring people together. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll hopefully we'll you guys can DM us and tell us who you want to see. Absolutely, and we'll try and get a lot of cool, interesting, different people. Mm -hmm. You know, not that same, only Western or only English or only right. Liberty. We'll get a bunch of different people that kind of make it um, all go together. You know, and we can crack on and get riding. Absolutely, I'm just so excited to be working with you, and I think we're gonna honestly just create some magic this year. Yeah. So. Let us know what you think. This is going to be kind of a shorter episode. Just wanted to intro both Steve and I and sh share a little bit about our background um, and how we got to where we are today. But of course, we're always learning, always looking to get better. So we're just like you guys. We'll bring you some of the best and we can learn on the way, learn together. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, guys. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye.